welcome back to Slow Saturday. I've had a long sabbatical and I know some of you know what happened, some of you don't. Um, I had quite a health scare in 2020 and had nothing to do with COVID, but it really um, pushed me to the point where I realized I needed to take a break and I did. So I took a year off, just about, and it was great. My mind is clear, I'm ready to continue. My, my um, inspiration and motivation has all come back, so I feel great at the moment and I'm excited for what lies ahead. So let's get straight into things. I did a poll on um, my Facebook group, Ilona Slow Life Creations, a week or two ago, I think it's about two weeks ago, in which I spoke about the challenges um, that crafters have when there's a cowl offered. We spoke about the price of the pattern, the price of the kit, the, the hosting and everything else, and I got some really, really good comments from everybody, and um, if you're one of them, I really want to thank you for participating in the poll. It makes it so much easier if we can find out from our audience what they want. Um, so the first thing, I've just got a little list here that I don't forget anything. The first thing that I want to talk about is the price of patterns. In this um, poll, several people mentioned that if a pattern is more than $5, they go past. They're not interested, they're not going to pay more than that. And to me, that was a bit of a shocker. Um, I have, or I had, one pattern on Ravelry that was $10. And I sat and I thought about this for a while, and you know what? I got to the, I got a little bit of wisdom, I think. The, va the, the way I view this is, I would rather have 20 people pay $5 each, then have 10 people pay $10 each. The income for me is the same, but the exposure is double because crafters show what they do and other people will see what they do and they will maybe come back to buy my pattern as well. So the pattern that was on Ravelry for a whole $10 has been reduced to $5 and I would like to show it to you. This is the second crochet book that I published. This is an Afrikaans book. This one has not been translated. The first one has been translated into English, but this one hasn't. And in this book, there is a coat. Coat for a diva is the name of the project. And I would like to show it to you. There is a full page photo of one version. This one was knitted in pastel colors. Oh, let me bend this book a little bit. So... Okay, this one was done in pastel colors. I will also give you some photos um, afterwards. Uh, this one might be might more easy to see. This is my bold colors. This is my coat. You can see that it is a coat. You can make it as long as you like. Now, this pattern is also a method, which means that I don't tell you which yarn to use. I don't tell you which hook to use, I don't tell you how many stitches, it is a method. So it starts off with, I think in this one we will start off with measuring your head. Yeah, you start with the, the, the circumference of your neck, the circumference of your neck. And then there's a wee little bit of math involved where I tell you to count your chain and make sure that you have a number divisible by six, for instance. And from there on, it is a method. You go, you fit regularly, and you crochet it to fit your body. It's as simple as that. So you can use, obviously there will be yarn recommendations, um, I think if you want to, to make the full length coat, the way I did it, it hangs on my calves. Um, a very heavy thick yarn will not be the best choice because it's going to stretch out. I used sock weight cotton and it is an absolute pleasure to wear that coat. It's my favorite item 
of everything that I've made for myself, crochet and knitting, that coat is my absolute favorite. So this pattern is available on Ravelry and it's available at only $5 now and it will stay like that. It's not on a special offering for $5 for a limited time. It will stay on $5. It's excellent for stash busting because of the many colors in the coat. You can make the coat in less colors if you want. You can make it in only one color if you want. Whatever you want to do, you can. It will work and you can use whatever you on you want. Okay, so that's the first thing in the cowl. It's the, the, the poll. It was the price of the patterns. Then we spoke about um, the kits of the cowls. And that was very interesting to me. Five years ago or so, I would have a lot of kit sales for a cow, but I've seen a dwindling steadily, which is why I did the poll on Facebook to find out why is this the way it is. And four reasons was given why people do not want to purchase the kits for a cow. The first reason they gave was it's simply finance. Um, many people have a different financial situation now than what they had before COVID came. Many people just simply cannot afford it because I work in natural fiber, so obviously it's more expensive than buying acrylic yarn. Um, so financial situation, just plain forward, I cannot afford it, has been said a lot. And many of those people were also international shoppers um, Although they would be able to afford the kit, the yarn, they would not be able to afford the international shipping along with it, which I fully understand. And then a lot of the people, um, it's just exchange rate. It's just way out of their reach. The exchange rate is not in their favor. The same with the pattern price. It's just too costly if you convert it to dollar. South Africa as well, we, we also on the low end of the spectrum, the exchange rate is really not in our favor and I understand that's the case for many other crafters around the world. The second thing is many people have a huge stash and they would like to use the yarn from the stash, which I also understand. There's no use in buying yarn and putting it away and buying yarn and putting it away and eventually you've got no more space for more. What are you going to do with it? So a lot of people want to use the stash that they've built up through the years. Makes perfect sense. The third reason that was given, and I absolutely love this one. People said that I have stash, but I can afford a kit. But if I want to buy a kit, I want to buy from my local yarn shop and support them. I think that is so beautiful to me and I've had a yarn shop in the past so for me to hear that or to read that is really really heartwarming. Um, you know what the local yarn shops the brick and mortar shops are really really having a tough time surviving. Online shopping is is the most popular thing in the world at the moment especially after this pandemic has hit us um, even groceries now we never had online grocery delivery in this little town where we are, but now we do. Um, and it's lovely. I can order on an app and within an hour a little guy on his motorcycle comes and he delivers my groceries. I mean, why would I have to face the shops and the noise and all the people and the possible um, exposure to COVID? And that, be because so many people has gone into online shopping because of COVID, that has spilled over into other areas of their life <clears throat> where they usually were willing to go to the local yarn shop now that they've had the opportunity to shop for groceries, it's easier for them to now shop for yarn as well. Where previously they were not online shoppers, now they are. So the brick and mortar shops are going through a tough time. I know some of them are closing down and they are only going online. In South Africa, we just heard the news last week that um, one of my favorite yarn shops, which is called Yarn in, in Afrikaans, um, J-A-A-R-N, she's closed her brick and mortar shop and she's gone back home with all her stock and it's now only an online business. And I understand that. 
That's where the world is going. We can't fight it. We have to adapt. Fit in. We have no choice. But those brick and mortar shops that are still there, it's, it's a wonderful idea that crafters wants to support that local yarn shops. And even if it's not a brick and mortar shop, for me in South Africa, if I were to participate in a cow before I would order yarn from somebody in Europe or somebody in, in America, I would order it from a local crafter here that is selling yarn that she has dyed or from a local online yarn shop here. I would choose to support my own people. It's just the way we are made and it's a good thing. So by all means, support the yarn shops in your country, in your area, in your town. I understand that. And then the last, the last um, reason that was given for people that no longer want to buy kits was very interesting to me. They don't want to buy the standard kits. They want to choose their own colors. Quite a few people said that they want to buy a kit, but they want to have the option to choose their own colors. I, it's never crossed my mind. I always, when I um, planned my kits for my cows, I always tried to make provision for everybody. You know, there was one blues and one greens and one pinks and purples and one neutral colors. And we try to cater for everything, but obviously it is difficult. You can't please everybody. It's just not possible. So that makes complete sense as well. So, all right. Vacheche is nearly finished. I finished the knitting last night. There's one tail that hasn't been woven in last night because it was navy. I wanted to check in the daylight today that I did my grafting properly before I weave in the last tail. And then there's some other finishes that I still want to do, but let me show you what the blanket looks like. So this is Vacheche. I will take nice photos um, when I've done everything. So nice photos will still come. Um, this color scheme was chosen by my daughter-in-law. Um, she's expecting a baby boy who is due at the end of the month. So she wanted the blues and the mustard and a gray. So that is what this is all about. I will never work in navy for myself. I absolutely hate navy. I don't like it. So, <clears throat> okay, let's talk about the color. How the color is going to work and what it's going to cost and whatever have you. Okay, so let's talk about the price first. In line with this thing of people not wanting to buy kits, previously I made my income from a cow through kit sales. Whichever yarn house I was working with would pay me a commission on the kits that was sold. So obviously that has dwindled away. I don't think we're going to sell many kits and if we do, because of the difficult times we are in, I've gone so far as to say to the yarn house, I don't want any commission on the kit sales. She's already given me the yarn at a wholesale price, so I'm grateful for that. And any kits that are sold, she needs the money. The, the yarn houses are really, really suffering, especially the ones that are doing it. Um, indie dyers that are working from their houses dyeing yarn they really need the support so i just said to her i don't want any commission so in light of that in order to generate a return on my investment of time i am going to sell the pattern on ravelry and it's going to be at five dollars so i in my mind i figured out that i'm going to rework all my patterns big things like blankets and a full length coat, for instance, will go for $5. Um, jumpers, jerseys, pullovers, that kind of thing, $4. Um, shawls, uh, $3. And hats and scarves, $2 or $3. It depends on the complexity of the pattern. So that's where my mind's going. So the pattern will be available on Ravelry for $5. And it will be a cull. So I'm going to host the cull in a separate group on Facebook. On Ravelry, you will be able to buy the pattern when from Monday onwards. It will be available on Ravelry by Monday. So on Monday, you can buy the pattern for the cull and you will have all the information that you need as to yarn requirements, the size of the thing, 
and whatever so that you have time to prepare. Then we're going to have three weeks to prepare. So on the 11th of April, the call will start off. Now in order to join the Facebook group, um, you will have to give me your order number of the patent purchase on Ravelry and then I will allow you into the group. So the pattern releases will work like this. Um, every week I'm going to update the file in Ravelry and you will get an update via Ravelry to say the pattern has been updated, there's a new portion in the pattern. The cowl will span over eight weeks, so at the end of the eight weeks your blanket will be finished, but the Facebook group will remain for another four weeks in case somebody has fallen a little bit behind, but then I'm going to close the group. The reason for that, I need to move on to another project. I can't sit on Vacheche for the rest of the year, so there's support for 12 weeks, and then it's just a normal pattern on Ravelry that you buy and you make. Okay, the blanket is, a, it's a knitted blanket by the way. It's designed with an eye cord that's um, knitted all the way through. From the beginning you start with the eye cord, you knit the eye cord as you knit the blanket and the last six stitches you graft together so when you cast, when you're done with the grafting you're done with the blanket in, this, in essence. There's no more knitting to do, there's no stitches that has to be picked up, there's no border that has to be added afterwards. It's straightforward, it's very pleasant, I like it that way. Okay, so have I forgotten anything about Vacheche? Uh, okay, there are going to be kits available from Dana, from Colorspun. If you are in South Africa and you can afford it, please consider supporting Dana. As I said, it's, it's a tough time for all the indie dyes. And we are making provision for you to choose your own colors. Dana is more than willing to assist you. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure how she's going to do on our website, but we are working on it. Um, there will be an option to order a kit and you can choose your own colors. Okay. Um, have I said anything on that? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, on Monday, the pattern will be on Ravelry with um, nice photos so, you, so that you can see exactly what it looks like. Five dollars each separate Facebook group for the Cal hosting and we will start on the 11th of April. Okay, that's Vacheche done. What's my next project? I love design your own. I think it's because I'm a little bit out of proportion. My boobs are too big for my shoulder measurement so I don't easily knit somebody else's pattern or crochet somebody else's pattern because I'm not sure how it's going to fit me and and if if I have to use another pattern or if I decide to use somebody else's pattern I always choose top down so that I can adjust the thing easily okay so I ordered um, Sintala yarn from Dana um, color spun as well now, Scintilla is 80% cotton and 20% viscose, and I've got it in this delightful purple color. I really like, like purple. Purple is my favorite color at the moment. I don't know when it happened, but orange has shifted a little bit to second place, and, orange, and purple is coming to first place. So, with this purple yarn, I'm going to do a design your own crochet top. It's going to have a round neck. And it's going to have raglan sleeves and it's going to have an inset here under the arms widening to the bottom so that it's a nice flowy um, top. It's not tight around the hips or anything and you can adjust that flowy piece to make provision for more space if you need, if you have a big tummy. So that's the next project that official project that I'm going to work on. Obviously, um, as I mentioned, today in a week's time we're taking a long road trip down to the Cape. Our um, first grandson is due at the end of March. We've got four granddaughters already. Sorry, my nose is itching. I'm sorry. Uh, woo. The seasons are turning. It's me and my hay fever again. So in the car, 
I'm probably not going to work on the crochet top because I need space when I'm designing. I need to have a computer there. I, I crochet a row, I check the row, I type the row and so forth. So um, there's another design that I wanted to do that is a knitted design. I want to knit a cowl that can be transformed into a beanie. And I'm going to do a prototype of that in the car without any stitch pattern, just plain stocking stitch because that's nice for me to knit. I can keep my hands busy and I don't have to look at them. I can look at whatever is available in the scenery and that is what I will keep busy. But when I get on holiday, obviously that thing will go quite fast because we're going to spend about... Uh, it's about 1,800 kilometers that we're going to drive down over three days. It's quite possible that I'm going to finish it in the three days. So when we get um, to our holiday destination, I will probably start working on the crochet top. I might or I might continue with the second version of the knitted cowl. If, if my concept works, I will start on the second version and bring some stitch pattern in there as well. So that is my planning right now. So Bacheche is launching next month. Um, pretty soon after that the crochet top will follow. That won't be a curl. It will just be a pattern that will be released. Um, it's, a, it's a top so it will probably go for $4. I think that's fair. And you can adjust the pattern any which way you want you can and and we've tested this when we did the um book two there's another pattern in here that's also on ravelry i must just go check its price i forgot that it's on ravelry where is it now um this pattern was for a pullover jersey jumper whatever you want to call it and it was tested on a baby my method it was tested on a young girl, a child of about seven or eight, and obviously my adult version. And it worked splendidly for all the sizes. Uh, this photo is a bit small, I don't know if you would be able to see it. Um, I will give you the um, link to Ravelry for this pattern as well. This is a lovely one to wear. It's got such nice texture and it is so warm and comfy. I love this jersey. Although, I can tell you, I won't easily, I, I don't want to see another front post double crochet for a very long time. <laughs> but it was delightful. It was a fantastic um, project to make. And I love wearing it in the winter and I always get compliments. People always ask me, um, how did you do this? How does it work? So, yeah, if you look at the pattern, you will get a good indication of uh, the crochet top that I want to make now. Although the start is going to be vastly different, I'm going to do it differently. But yeah, um, I love a raglan. I really do. I love a raglan. It just sits so nicely. It really does. Okay, so I'll put the pattern links on Ravelry for you into the comments and you can go check it out if you want to support me by a pattern. That will help me immensely. And then by Cheche is starting soon. If you are into knitting and if you can make a baby blanket for yourself or for somebody else, the blanket is about 125 by 125 depending on your tension and whatever yarn you're going to use so it might be bigger um, we will only know that um, I will give you a swatch that you can make with your yarn in the pattern and then you can calculate according to that what your finished size is going to be like mine is a little bit bigger than 125 because I chose not to make it in cotton mine is actually made in pure merino. I've made merino for all my grandchildren, for each one, and um, so this is the one for the baby boy. Bloody expensive blanket, let me tell you. Merino is so expensive at the moment. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. I doubt that I will easily make merino for anybody else 
but me and my grandchildren and my husband. The rest of the people, if I want to make a gift for somebody, they will probably get gotten. <laughs> it's just extremely expensive at the moment. Yes. Okay, so I've said everything that I wanted to say. Um, what is left is my utter gratitude. I am so grateful for all of you that have um, stuck with me through thick and thin. I started with Jan and a in 2013 and I've had nothing but excellent support from wonderful crafters. The negatives in that time were so few um, that I can virtually count them on my one hand. I had negatives when a person, well people stole from our shop, they stole yarn. I mean that peed me off to no end. I had negatives in that um, crafters would come into the shop with their husbands and the husband would be an absolute asshole about his wife crafting and uh, that peed me off as well. And um, that was about it, I think. It was a wonderful journey for me to have yarn in a barn for about five years and when I had a nervous breakdown, I closed it down. But even after that, where I just continued with the designing, the crafters in my groups on Facebook kept me going. You gave me purpose to get up in the morning and to start doing something. Um, when I was very sick in 2020, um, what kept me going was the knowledge that there are crafters out there who are feeling completely overwhelmed with this pandemic and maybe my pattern can give somebody the reason to get up today and that gave me the reason to get to get up and to keep going. I don't think I would have recovered as fast without that. So each of you has played a major role in my recovery mentally and physically. And I really want to thank you for sticking around through this time that I've taken this long sabbatical. And the moment I unarchived, unarchived, I wonder if that's a word. The moment I took the group on Facebook out of the archive and made it live again, that sounds better. I was just flooded with comments of people that said, I'm so glad you're back. Welcome back. I'm so glad to see you again. You know what? You really, really made my entire year. You, you really made me feel so special. I, I have no words to explain it. I'm just so thankful for each of you that are in my group and that are playing such a big role in my life. And you give me a purpose. And for that, I really, really love you. Um, my brain is wired in such a way that I'm always looking for something challenging and just knitting and crocheting brings the best out of me. It, it challenges my brain but at the same time it keeps me calm and relaxed. Um, being a business analyst in the corporate world was the challenge for my brain. That was lovely but it brought out the absolute bitch in me because of all the people, all the noise and all the chauvinism, I just, it, it, it brings out the worst in me. I'm not happy there. Um, I'm fulfilled in, in my job, but I'm not happy. But designing ticks everything. It, it challenges my brain. It gives me an immense sense of satisfaction when I get a new design done. And it's everything that I had in my mind in the picture that I was seeing. And then... I still have peace and quiet around me because it has actually relaxed me. I can cope better with my husband's tension and stress than when I have my own tension and stress. There's a lot more peace in my house when I'm just working on crochet and knitting designs instead of having a corporate job myself. Um, so to each one of you, you have meant so much to me and I don't think you will ever understand what I'm trying to convey with words, but I'm really battling. Um, um, I wish I could zip open my heart and show it to you so that you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. But 
each one of you are so welcome in my world and you are so appreciated in my world and for those that took part in the poll that really gave me a, a view into what is happening in the craft world and what you need and what you want thank you so much you've given me a new direction and and I'm thankful for that I'm really thankful okay I've said everything I wanted to say the next video I'm still on a road trip so you will probably get a live video in the car maybe or I don't know where I'm gonna be when I do the video I'll see where I have time to do it and um, I don't know how how long it's gonna be but I will surely be able to show you the cow that I will be working on okay so I will see you next week Saturday you must have a wonderful weekend take it slow it is slow Saturday. You need to relax, you need to rest, you need to look after yourself. We are not made to be um, Wonder Woman going full blast 24-7. No, we are human, we need breaks, we need to look after our own mental state, we need to look after our physical state, we need to look after ourselves on a spiritual level as well. So take good care of yourself over the weekend and have a blessed, slow Saturday. I'll see you in a week.